taking something with fur, or even feathers in one case, into the den can be a risky business. That's shit. Take, take that lead off. Sometimes they can just get a bit too friendly with the dragons. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> She's not the most loyal dog, is she? No. She's completely transferred her affections. Bye. bye. Occasionally, they can get a bit too vocal. Oh, he's giving me the financials. Yeah. <laughs> And sometimes they can be just a tad too chilled. I wish I was as calm as she was, I can tell you. <laughs> and then there are the times when they completely steal the show. OK, do you just want my money? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Hoping her King Charles Spaniel, Lola, will be on Doggy Best Behaviour tonight is Italian Nadia Laguel. I adore dogs, and I think they're the best companion any person can have. We'll get you loads of treats after. <laughs> Growing up in Italy, we always had dogs in our family. When I moved to the UK, at the first opportunity, I got Lola. Nadia's startup aims to wed going walkies with the web. As a dog owner, I definitely noticed there was something missing on the market. So I decided to build a service that all dog parents could use. The pooch-friendly proposition has already sparked speculation in the den. Rent a dog to have dinner with you. Dinnerdogs.com. We could call it doggy date. 50-50. I'm in. <laughs> the dragons appear to be in a playful mood. So can Nadia bring them to heel? Come on, Lola. Before parting them from their cash. Hello, dragons. This is Lola, and I'm Nadia, and we're the co-founders of Wagit. Wagit is the first dog-friendly online booking platform in the UK. We're here to seek £50,000 for 5.5% 5 .5 of our business. My background is in online reservations. I was the first salesperson in Europe for OpenTable, and then I was director of sales at Bookertable, which is now a TripAdvisor business. When Lola came into my life, I realised how difficult it was to book places to go with your dog. When you looked online, the options were limited, and even when you found somewhere dog-friendly, you'd turn up and you'd be sat at the back next to the bins or asked to sit outside even if it was raining. And when it came to groomers, there was actually no way to book online. You'd have to call and they never answered because they were grooming. <laughs> so I thought there has to be a better way. There are now over 12 million uh, dog owners in the UK. And according to the Kennel Club, 98% of dog-friendly pub owners say that customers with dogs bring them better business. That's where Wagit comes in. Our website enables people to discover, find and book places to take their dog. So let me show you how it works. You can select groomers, pubs and bars, restaurants or taxis. You then put the time and area, and then you click Submit. After that, you get a selection of what's available, your preferences. You can select one and look at the description, if they have a doggy menu, for example, and all that information. You select the time, and then you put in your details if they're not already in there. That's how simple it is. Lola and I are looking for a dog-friendly dragon, and we know you all are, <laughs> to join the Wagget Pack. <laughs> a canine-compatible online platform for restaurant booking is the offering from Nadia Laguel. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> who's seeking a £50,000 investment in return for a 5.5% share in her business. I don't think she wants to take any questions. <laughs> I think we should let Lola go if she doesn't want to be in the den. OK. Lola's work may be done, but Nadia's has only just begun. Peter Jones is first with the questions, and he's clearly intrigued by this entrepreneur's CV. Nadia. Yes. Your experience in the past is really interesting. Congratulations. Thank you. What do you believe in terms of scale with your experience? How are you going to achieve sort of growth for the business? The business model is interesting because having come from Open Table, the business model for reservation companies like that is transactional, so they charge per cover. But with us, it's more a benefit 
it's a marketing channel for the restaurants to market to dog owners. So it'll be promotions and so on. And there's so much we can do to a business, you know, offer, offering them more um, opportunity to, to market to dogs. There's, I mean, there's so many events. Restaurants can fill their quieter times at lunchtime with dog owners. And then the other side to monetize is once everyone falls in love and books through Wagget, the community side of it, so the consumers. Yeah, I get the advertising piece on there as you grow, but so how many people, do you have to register on this site or can I just use this as a search engine? You can just use it as a search engine. How does that help you grab a subscriber or build your data? How do you do that? You mean if you don't register? Yeah, if I can go on there and use similar to a Google search. The idea is the loyalty scheme will, in, will encourage people to register. What I'd like to do with Wagget is you can get points if you go near in a restaurant, if you book your groomer. Okay, so you haven't got any registered users at the moment? No, I have. You have? How we many have, have you got? We have about 400. Nadia's website is already gaining traction. But the den's newest pet owner wants to discover exactly how she intends to convert dog-friendly days out into financial clout. Puppies, I, I've just got one. <gasps> so I know exactly uh, where you're coming from. OK, so the business model you've now told us, uh, how will you make an income out of it? We will charge uh, operators, so restaurants, um, groomers and so on, a monthly subscription fee. It will be tiered, so tier one, tier two, tier three, depending on how much they want to market with us. I'm a restaurateur, so what will I have to pay on your subscription to enrol? So £10 uh, is the tier one subscription. £10 a month? Yeah. How many restaurants have you got signed up at the moment? Uh, 39. And the only way a restaurant can sign up is if they pay? Yes. So if I'm a visitor and I want to go for a restaurant, there's only 39 options I have in the United Kingdom at the moment. At the moment, yes. That's because you've put this huge barrier in the way of you achieving scale, which is you're charging every single restaurant to list. The reason why OpenTable, Yelp, and all these other websites have huge scale from day one is there's no resistance for a restaurant to join. You've created resistance, which means you have to now go around and knock on every restaurant's door to sign them up one by one. But I offered anyone who would join three months free. You must be the only person in the industry that's charging people to list beyond 90 days. There are a couple of others. At scale. And also, Open Table um, was charged a monthly fee as well. That's an add-on. They have a freemium model with the, the premium upside if you want it as a restaurant, which yeah. lists you higher, you get featured, etc., etc. Yeah. Right. If you want to get scale quickly, have a freemium model where every dog-friendly restaurant in the land can sign up and then charge them for better placement or else you're gonna to have to knock on every restaurant's door. So I think that's an existential risk to your model. Stephen Bartlett fears that Nadia could be barking up the wrong tree with her current business model. So will Sarah Davies see greater potential in her plans to harness the pooch-owning pound? Honestly, I think you've done a brilliant job getting to this point. There's clearly demand in the market. I think you've you've come into the market at the exact right time when you've got all of these dog owners now flooding into the market and things are opening up, people are desperate to get out there. And obviously you've got the, the proven track record. You've made this work for a couple of huge companies. So, you know, all of that together suggests it could be a recipe for success. Thank you. How big does this have to be for this to become a credible proposition? 600, 700 restaurants. How many a day are you signing up at the moment? So we get about five or six a day, uh, a week, sorry. Five or six a week. Yeah, but what we want to do is really accelerate the business now. Um, we need marketing to push a bit more and we need the developers to improve a few things. Um, I build the website really quickly um, to, to get it up and, and see how much interest it would get. You built it? Well. I had it built. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know how to do coding. And you don't think you can get from the place you're at at the moment to that six, seven hundred without having an investment to improve the tech platform? I can get there, but it'll take me a lot longer. You're building a tech company here. You said that there's no one in your team that has built a tech company before. Well, 
I, I, my business partner and one of the investors is a friend of mine and he's a product manager and helped build a tech business and then exited. So he's the one who's helping me build the product. I would feel from my experience building tech companies that you'd need someone in-house that has yes. technical expertise. And if, you're, if you are going to go out to market and get investors, the first thing they're going to want to know is where's your technical co-founder? Who's the CTO? Yes, and, and that's what I want. With a background in hospitality, this entrepreneur knows her gourmet bites. But when it comes to mega bites, her lack of expertise is giving cause for concern. Now, the den's most ardent dog lover, with four canine companions of her own, wants to discover more about the business's competition. Nadia, what was your actual role at Open Table? I was sales. So, what does that website do to tell consumers about dogs? <clears throat> Open Table. Open Table. Open Table doesn't even have a tick box at the moment for, for dog friendly ones. So where would I go now if I was looking for pet-friendly stuff? I mean, the way I used to do it is you put it in Google and just hope. And then it's always the same three or four that come up in my area. But I guess I'm trying to understand what your added value is. And I have a little bit of a worry for you. I think it is going to become a tick box. Any other site that just sells restaurants is just going to add that symbol and have a filter that brings it forward whenever you put a search in which I think is a great shame because, you know, you kind of spotted it first, you know? <laughs> But I'm afraid I, I worry about that for you and, you know, going into investment with a worry for somebody is not a good idea. So I'm really sorry, Nadia, I won't be investing. Okay. I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. Disappointment for Nadia, who has lost her first dragon. Will a tech-savvy Peter Jones prove any more receptive to this entrepreneur's attempt to computerise canine hospitality? I like it. I think it's a really good idea. I'm slightly disappointed, though, with your background, that you haven't come in with a much bigger number of customers on there already. 39. I would have expected you to have said, I've got several hundred restaurants already on board. And I'm predicting by the end of this month, I'll have a thousand restaurants, 1500 next month. I'd expect much more of a pipeline of where it's going. So for that reason, I'm out, but good luck. Thank you. Nadia. Hi. So my worry is that you're just going to shine such a big light on this that these other companies are going to go, oh, look what we've been missing, guys. There's this huge business opportunity over here. If we just make our website a little bit more dog friendly, stick a couple of pictures of dogs on, get some testimonials, write a few blogs. Bob's your uncle, and we're all sorted, OK? You're going to raise awareness for then someone else to eat your dinner. So as sad as I am to say it, because you seem lovely, I can't invest today and I'm out. I travel everywhere with my dog, and I felt the pain that you're trying to resolve. Completely get that. My issue is about the technical expertise within the team. And so with this type of business, I would want to have seen technical expertise in the core team to give me peace of mind that this team will iterate through all of the problems that I know they're going to encounter. And I haven't seen that today. So for that reason, I'm out. Four dragons have now bowed out. Only fashion tycoon Tuka Suleiman remains. Is he prepared to trade the world of the catwalk for that of the dog walk? I think the idea is great. The way I see it is that you've got sort of three big challenges. First challenge really is to get your tech right and have good technical support. The second challenge is to get enough dog owners to use it. Mm -hmm. And the third challenge is to get enough restaurants. There's your three challenges. And on top of that, the main area is, is you know, the marketing. Because you know, what this really needs, if I have to be totally honest with you, this needs a million pounds thrown at it. And, and I, I think that your 50,000 ask is just a drop in the ocean. So I'm going to say to you, I wish you all the best, and I'm out.
Thank you. Thanks, Nadia. Thank Thanks for your feedback. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Nadia leaves the den without a deal. But despite the dog devotee's previous pedigree, the dragon's decision not to invest isn't proving a bone of contention. I just don't <laughs> think it will work without, as you say, huge resources, money and talent. At least a lot of money. Millions. You're right, Sue. Millions. Next for Lola and I, we'll just continue adding um, businesses to Wagit, improving it, and, <laughs> and maybe one day we'll come back. <laughs>